Let us bow our heads now for prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, the Almighty God who brought again Jesus Christ from the dead and has presented Him to us in this last days in the power of the Holy Spirit. We are grateful for these mighty visitations of the immortal God. And now, Father, we are facing another hour, an hour which might change the eternal destination of many people. And to approach this, Lord, we are insufficient because it is in the Scriptures that the Lamb took the book and open the seal. O Lamb of God, come forward. We pray, we call on you, Lord, the great Redeemer. Come forth and show us your plan of redemption that's been hid through the years, breaking this fifth seal for us tonight, Father, and revealing what's beneath that seal for us, that we might go away a better Christians than we are now might be better fit for the task it lays ahead we ask it in Jesus name Amen good evening friends I deem this a grand privilege to be here tonight on this great event I don't know anywhere that I could feel better at than to be on the work of the King. And now, coming especially on these lessons where we are just waiting, if He would not reveal it to me, I could not give it to you. I'm not trying to use any of my own thoughts or anything, just as He will Amen. give it. Amen. That's right. And... I, I'm sure that if I don't use my own thoughts and it comes in the way it has and all through life it's never been wrong, it won't be wrong this Amen. time. Amen. Now we're just gloriously and very, very thankful for what He has done for us. The great, Amen. mysterious hand of the living God. <clears throat> what greater thing could be? How much more a privileged people could we be than to have in our presence the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Amen. We would uh, probably <clears throat> blow the whistles and and hoss the flags and lay out the carpets and everything for the president of the nation to come to the city. But just think that would be all right and it'd be an honor to the city. But think in our little humble tabernacle tonight, we're inviting the King of Kings. Oh. And we don't, he don't uh, desire uh, carpets to be thrown out and so forth. He desires humble hearts to be laid out so that he might take these humble hearts and reveal to them the, the good things that he has in store for all those who Love him. Now, we ask, and I've got a testimony that I would like to um, to give. Now, if I'm mistaken on this, I just heard it, and I could be that I'm way uh, wrong. But I think the people are here, and uh, that the testimony applies to. And then, a few days ago, when I was out to my home now in, uh, in Arizona uh, we got a, a call that said there was a little boy that had uh, rheumatic fever and that goes to the heart and he was such a his father and mother such darling precious friends of mine it was uh, our, one of our deacons here of the church brother Collins his little boy, little Mikey, Joe's playmate, uh, was uh, suffering with uh, a, a rheumatic fever of the heart. And the doctors had sent him home, put him in the bed, 
and told the parents not to even let him up and to raise his up, take a drink of water, take it out of a straw. He was so bad. And the parents, faithful, comes to the tabernacle here and believes. And a few nights ago, not trying to wait, we announced healing services on Sunday, but seeing that we're going to have to answer questions, so then we had to omit the healing service. And then I had a little something that I've been keeping in my inside, in my heart. And the mother and father wanted if they could bring the child to the, the room. And they brought the little fellow out there. And the Holy Spirit pronounced him healed. Amen. And so the parents being respective of that, taking the little fellow home and sent him on to school. Just sent him on to school. The doctor got a hold of it. So the doctor wasn't very well pleased with such a thing. So he told the mother that the baby should be in bed, of course, and she gave him the story. And I think the man is, a, I understand, is a Christian believer by denomination, a, a Seventh-day Adventist, the doctor is. And so um, he said, well, you ought, it's time for the child for me to examine. said, you ought to at least have it examined. She said, very well. Took the child down and the doctor examined it through the blood where the rheumatic fever lays. And so I understand that the doctor was so amazed he didn't know what to do. The little boy is perfectly normal, sound and well. Now, uh, is the Collins is here? I might have told that wrong. Now, is that right, Sister Collins? Yeah. Yeah. That's little Mikey Collins, just about six, seven years old. And that happened right in the room about three nights ago. Oh, there had to be somebody in that room besides human beings. It was a, the great, mighty Jehovah. That's right. That comes to honor His Word. And I, I am so grateful to hear that. See, and I know we all are. Not only me, but all are. Because yes. what if that was, was your little boy or my little boy? Yes. And remember, um, giving testimony just as, just one, pick out one here and there. It's happening everywhere. But just to let you know that, that my real ministry is on divine healing. But you, I'm here for these seals because... A little later, you'll understand why I had to do this. And um, so I'm not a teacher. I'm not a theologian. I, I just pray for the sick. And um, I love the Lord. And now, now in this all that last night we gave a testimony of uh, the little girl. I got her name and Billy's got it here now somewhere of the parent and who they are. And this little girl was in the last stage of leukemia. Just, uh, just so bad that they could not feed her by this mouth anymore. She had to be, her blood transfused through the veins. And she was a pretty little thing. Or she was small for her age, about like this little lady here, I suppose. But she was uh, about this high, very, they were like most of us, you could tell by the dressed child that, and the parents said they were very poor, just very poor. And um, so, but real reverend. And the Holy Spirit pronounced that child healed. I just think of that with leukemia. Hallelujah. That little fella, and the blood was so bad they couldn't even feed it through the mouth no more. It had to take go to the hospital and take the blood uh, for transfusions through the veins, feed it. I guess glucose or whatever, I don't know what medical terms does for that disease, but however it had to be fed that way. And before the child left the place, cried for a hamburger. And the parents, after they had heard the Holy Spirit of thus saith the Lord, see? They, and them strangers, never was around before, but they... Uh, uh, then the old couple had just got their seat here for him a few minutes ago, brother and sister kid, had instructed them on what to do and what to listen for. And the child, he just meals on the road home two or three days at that in school, 
And we went to the doctor and the doctor was so amazed. He said, there's not even one trace of leukemia found in the child. Amen. Uh, that's instantaneously uh, on the mark the power of Almighty God to take a bloodstream and cleanse it out right like that and put the pulsation of, of new life back in there because your, your bloodstream is your life mark and the create new cells and clean out the old and, and uh, uh, in what it is it is absolutely, I'd say this, it is a creative act of the Almighty God to take a, a bloodstream that's contaminated with cancer until a little fella yellow and puffed out. And within just a few moments' time, a brand new bloodstream. Hallelujah. I believe, I'm not going to speak it in His name. I'm going to speak it in my uh, the revelation of my faith. What happened in Sabinia Canyon the other day? I believe that the hour is approaching when missing limbs will be restored and the glorious power of the Creator. I, I believe that He can make a squirrel up here that has no... Here is the man or woman just got a part missing. And that's complete Lord, animal in itself. Lord, Lord. He is God. Hallelujah. I, I love Him. Amen. Well, uh, I get started on them subjects and we just talk on and the people uh, around the walls and standing in the halls and the rooms and so forth. So I'll get right straight to the message. And I want to say this. And I want to give thanks to Him who is omnipresent and that today not knowing one thing about that fifth seal, it came in that same mysterious way. This morning, just about an hour before daybreak, uh, when I was out in prayer. And today I have just sat these last five or six days just in a little room. Don't see no one. I'm just go out and eat my meal with a, with a friend, with some of my friends here. And um, of course you know who that friend is. It's Brother and Sister Wood. And and, um, and you know and I went over there and and uh, stay with them and everybody's been nice and there hasn't been anything just simply I'm trying to stay right with that message of these seals it's in part and I believe it's it's the hour of its revealing time a revelation of it and now I want you to be sure now uh, early before as soon as you can write out your unknown understandings of, of these seven seals if you have them and lay them on the desk and maybe Brother Neville or somebody might put a box up here or here here I see them now that's good I'd rather have them tonight and I can maybe study on them a while for Sunday morning now uh, uh, don't uh, this time right at this time don't make it request for say is the evidence the Holy Ghost this see I'd like to know about what I've taught about, you see, so we get this one subject like the church ages straight, see, because that's what we're dealing with now. Now, like we go to pray for the sick, and that takes maybe a, a different a prayer, and you're anointed, come in for a different thing, you know, and you're seeking God to find out, will there be somebody there tonight, Lord? Yes, it'll be somebody wearing a yellow dress sitting in your right-hand corner. And when you call her, call her this and say thus and thus she's did and she has so and so. And you go down there and watch and there she is. See, there you are. see it's different. See. This way I'm praying, Lord Jesus, what is the interpretation of this? Reveal it to me. Amen. And, uh, now, let's uh, get our, our swords out again now. And um, the word... And I appreciate Brother Neville's spiritual support as well as his brotherly love back here behind me praying for me and you're all out there also. And now, tonight being Friday night, we'll try just make it as... We, you can't possibly hit all the things. Of course, you could take that just one of those seals and stay just, just bring it right through the Scripture. Right down. See, it take months and months and months. And you still wouldn't have it because the, the seal itself 
ties the entire scripture from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. One seal of it. So what I try to do is keep from getting way off of it. I'll jot down the scripture or a little note here somewhere and keep from just keeping on that one thing. I have to watch back because I only speaking, I speak by uh, by way, I hope it's the right inspiration. And then when I when I look down to see the, uh, and, I, and I begin to speak and I feel myself going off on a subject, I turn around, look back the other way to try to get another scripture, to get it on that, to see, to kind of lighten it up a little on that side instead of trying to go on with that. And so now, we're going to study tonight, by the grace of God, by His help, the the fifth seal. And it's a short one, it's a little longer than the other, the four horse riders now, was uh, two verses apiece, and this is uh, three verses in this one. Now, the fifth seal begins the sixth chapter of Revelations, the ninth verse. And now, if you happen to be a, a stranger that hasn't heard these four horse riders, well, you see, sometimes you just drop back and, and kind of tack something, and when you do, you're expecting the people to understand it. So if there's a little something you don't understand, well, just kind of bear a little bit or get the tape and li- listen to it. And, and I'm sure you'll, you'll get a blessing from it. I have. I, I hope that you, that you do. Now, everybody ready from the ninth verse now uh, to the eleventh, or including the eleventh. And when he had opened the fifth seal... I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also, their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Now this is rather a mysterious. And now, uh, for the sake of tapes and clergymen and teachers that's sitting present, now... If you have a different view from this, I did too. But I'm just taking it from the inspiration which completely changed my view of it. And then I find out, as you see these revealed, it's sticking right back and bringing those church ages and the scriptures right together, tying it up. And that's the reason that I believe that it comes from God. Now, we uh, realize that, and I am thinking that sometimes that we depend on what some great uh, teacher might have said about it. See? And that's that's all right. I don't condemn the teacher, not by no means. And um, I don't condemn anybody. I just condemn sin, <laughs> unbelief, nobody. And some people have said you condemn organization. No, I don't. I condemn the system of organization, not the people in there, the group of people that makes the organization, no, but the system they're governed by. That's what I condemn. Catholic and Protestant, the same. My, I, some of the best friends that uh, 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 and I know of are Catholics. This world, do you realize, and the man may be sitting here tonight, perhaps is, the only way that we got this tabernacle built because a Roman Catholic stood on his feet in the court there and went to the front for me and said, boy, like nobody would do. That's right. And they couldn't turn it down. <laughs> That's right. He said they had to figure it out too many people. He said, oh, that won't make 80 more in that church like that. So that church is standing there said, I... I know the pastor and all like that. So that church has been there. So the rest of you can add to it. Then why can't they? A Roman Catholic. Good friend of mine. Yes, sir. Uh, A boy that is a a Catholic, a real royal friend of mine, was talking to me at a certain hardware store before left. He said, Billy, 
<laughs> I know you don't believe in our system of religion. He said, but I'm telling you right now. I said, God has honored your prayers so much for us. I believe if you get in trouble anywhere in the nation, that every Catholic in the country come to you. <laughs> so, you see, that's... He said, ever cross back, he called it. I'm going to tell it this way he did. Of course, they claim to be that because the early Christians packed crosses on their backs. We know that by history. And they claim to be the early Christian, which they were. But the system has got them off of that path, you see. And them people, a Catholic or Jew or whatever it is, they're a human being off the same tree that we come from. See? That's right. There are, there are people who love and eat and drink and sleep and uh, just like anybody else. And so we must never condemn individuals. No, no one, see. But we mustn't condemn individuals. But as a minister, I have to strike that serpent out there that's biting into those people, you see. And um, I, don't, I don't even... Uh, it's me and myself, I wouldn't do that if it wasn't a commission from God that I'm duty bound to do it. See? Amen. And I must hold that true and faithful. But if a Catholic Jew or whatever he was come here, if he's a Mohammedan Greek or Orthodox or whatever he might be, if he come here to be prayed for, I'd pray just as sincerely for him as I would for my own. That's right. Certainly, because it's a human being. I've prayed for Buddhas and Sikhs, Jains, Mohammeds, and, and ever kind, you see, like that. And I don't ask them no questions. I just pray for them because there's somebody, a human being, that wants to get well and try to make life a little easier along the road for them. Now, we realize that in this, and many of you here, I know there's at least two or three real scholars sitting here. And... Um, and they're smart, read out of, out of other men's doctrines on this subject. And I want these brethren to know that I, I'm not condemning these men. I'm only expressing what the Lord shows me. That's all I got. Now, we don't want to never think it because some little washwoman or, or a little plow boy out there couldn't get a re revelation from God. Because, you see, it... God, uh, He uh, actually reveals Himself in simplicity. That's We had that Sunday to start this off on. How He reveals Himself in His simplicity. Uh, that's what makes Him great. Now let, let me just, let me re review that just for a minute. What makes God great is because He can make Himself so simple. Amen. That's what makes Him great. God is great and can make Himself in such a simple form that the wise of this world can't find Him. Amen. They just can't find Him because He makes Himself too simple. Now what? And this in itself is the mystery of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. See? This in itself, that, uh, that there can be nothing greater than God. Amen. Amen. And you can't make anything as simple as He makes Himself. Amen. <laughs> See? That's what makes Him great. See? Now a great man, he just could get a little greater and maybe he stoop down and say, how do you do to you? See? Or something like that. But he can't make himself live. There's just something about him. He's a human. He just can't make himself look good. When he gets to get down too small... Then the first thing you always know, got to refer to what somebody else did and like that, and then he starts pulling himself back up again, see? But the way up is down Amen. in God. Yes, the wise of the world is trying in their wisdom to find Him. They only climb away from Him in doing so. See? The wise of the world, if you're trying to explain something by some mathematics or something... Remember, he's even put it in the Bible, in Reve uh, no, I beg your pardon, Isaiah 35, I believe it is, that even, it's so, it's so simple that even a, a, a delinquent person would understand it. Amen. Or even a fool shall not err therein. Wise misses it far by their wisdom, 
going farther from him by trying to find him by wisdom. Now don't forget that. That'll be chafing. The wise, in their wisdom, go so far to try to find him by their wisdom, they miss him. Yeah. If they could be big enough to be simple enough, they could find him. <laughs> If you're big enough to get simple enough, see? <laughs> that, and you know that, that really is the truth. Yeah. I've went into people in their offices uh, and so forth that were really, well, man, big kings. See? And potentates, monarchs. And usually, they were a big man. And then I went into places where a guy got a change of clothes. Maybe some uh, minister that won't argue with me a while. And you, you'd think that the world couldn't run without him, see? Yeah. And that, that's just puffed up in the hay. Yeah. But a, a big man, a big man sets down and tries to make you think you're the big man. Yeah. See? Yeah. see? He can humble himself. And see, God is so great. Though he can humble himself a place that a human being can't climb down there. <laughs> that's all. And, then they're, and they're trying to find him. Now look. They're trying to find him by sending the boys to school and getting a Bachelor of Art degree. And, and they're trying to find it by a theological uh, a terminology of, 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 of the Bible. And they're trying to find him by educational programs and by organizational programs and by beautifying things and trying to find... He's not there at all. You're just fighting the wind. That's all. You're getting away from it. They could be big enough to be to be simple enough. They could find him in that direction <laughs> by being simple. But as long as you're going towards wisdom, you're going away from him. Now, let me get that so you won't miss it. As long as you're trying to find God by wisdom, like it was in the Garden of Eden, like it was in the days of Moses, like it was in the days of... Uh, no, like it's been in the days of Christ, in the days of John, in the days of the apostles, and to this day, when you try to figure it out and try to find God by wisdom, you're going farther from Him all the time. Amen. You're trying to understand it. There's no way of doing it. Amen. Just accept it. Amen. See? Just believe it. Don't try to understand it. I can't understand why... It, um, well, a lot of things. <laughs> Not many things I do understand or can't understand. I can't understand how this young fellow sitting here eats the same food I can. And, and here he is, uh, got a full head of hair. I ain't got him. <laughs> I don't understand it. They tell me calcium makes it and I can't keep my fingernails cut off enough and no hair at all to cut off. I, I don't understand that. As the old saying is, uh, it is not to kind of change the position, the ser seriousness, but it is seriousness, but I haven't got to the seal yet, how that a black cow can eat green grass and give white milk and churn yellow butter. I, I sure couldn't explain that. <laughs> see? Of course, you see, each one's a product of the other one. How did that? I can't explain it. can't explain how two lilies stand or two flowers of the same breed and one red and the other yellow and one brown and one blue. I don't understand it. Same sun upon them. Where does the color come from? <laughs> See? I, I can't explain it. But yet you have to accept it. I just wish that some great theologian would explain to me how this world stands in orbit. <laughs> I wish you could scientifically throw me a ball in the air turning and let it make the second revolution in the same place you couldn't do it. And yet this is so perfectly timed till they can tell the eclipse of the sun to the minute, 20 years from now. They ain't got a, a watch or a clock or any piece of machinery that's that perfect. And yet it stands there. And then leaning backwards. What if it straightened up a little bit? Amen. Yeah. Amen. You just make yourself silly. Right? See? So you see, don't try to get wisdom to understand. Just believe what he says. Amen. So, and the more simple you can get, then there you are. You'll find it. Amen. Now, I'm so thankful for that. Thankful that He is has made Himself simple. Now, 
We find the sixth chapter and the ninth verse. Let me start now. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony they held. Notice, there is no mention of another beast or a living, living creature to this announcement of the fifth seal. I remember there was on the fourth seal there was on the first seal, second, third, and fourth, but none here. See? Now, if you notice, let's just read back one of the seals. Let's go back to the fourth seal. See? And that's the seventh verse. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come see. When he opened the third seal, I heard the voice of the, of the third beast say, Come and see. Yeah. Of the second beast come and see, and the first beast say come and see. But then when we get to the fifth seal, there's no beast. Mm-hmm. I just noticed. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar. Yeah. Right quick. See, there's no there's no beast there, and a beast represents power. We know that. See? There's no living creature. Now one of those creatures. We find out in studying the, the, the revelation in the churches that the one of them had, uh, was a lion. And the other one, the other one was an ox. And the other one was a man. And the other one was an eagle. We find out in the church ages that those four beasts, meaning four powers, was gathered around the Acts of the Apostle, just the way that the, um, the uh, tabernacle in the wilderness, and you understand it because it won't take time going to it, how we draw it out here and show just exactly they were watching over this, the Lamb and the Word, to perform the Word just as they did the, the Ark of the Covenant in the holy place in the wilderness and so forth. Now, we even positionally show by the tribal colors of Israel and by the... Uh, how many heard the, se- uh, the seven church ages? I guess most have. Two-thirds of you. Notice that even the nature of the beast was exactly a tribal emblem. Which way the four, the twelve tribes set four on each side. Or, or three tribes on each side. And the four beasts that watched these tribes from all four ways. And when we went and got the Gospels and show exactly when you enter into the ark, there was a guard in the ark, the covenant. And then we find out that the covenant of the new church, its representation on earth was the Holy Spirit. The blood had sent back to us the Holy Ghost. And the four beasts represented as the, uh, the twelve tribes of Israel as it watched and find their natures and taking that same nature and bring it to each one of those four Gospels exactly was exactly the same. One talked to the lion, the other to uh, the ox, and the other the four Gospels. That is, the four Gospels is the protection of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I just always wonder, it's stuck with me now, this is about six years, I guess, since I heard a great man say that that was the, uh, the Acts of the Apostles is just a framework. I've heard it said many times, but to hear a man with his status as a preacher and as a teacher that's wrote some of the famous books that the people read everywhere and to say that the Acts of the Apostles wasn't actually suitable for teaching of the church. When the Acts of the Apostles is the very foundation of it. Not the framework, the foundation. Because the Bible says that the, 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 the foundation of God is built upon the doctrine of the Apostles. Right. Tries to hit the cornerstone. And when this fellow stood there and made that remark, I, I, I just, my heart just failed. And I thought, no wonder. Well, I see now in the seals. <laughs> it just wasn't revealed. That's all. 
They still there. There they was, stand there, but something is saying that. Now, notice they guard. Now, when we got Matthew 28, 19, and run that thing down through Matthew, which represents the lion and coming in there, we found exactly why they baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And there he was standing there with that very scripture to guard the sacred trust of the baptism of the name of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm getting off on the church ages now. Notice, but here when we come to this fifth seal now, there's, uh, there's, there's no rider goes forth and there's no beast to announce it. John, this, the lamb opened it and John saw it. There was no one there to say, now come look, come see. Notice, no power of the living creature. Or there's, and on the sixth seal, there is no beast to announce it. And on the seventh seal, there's no beast to announce it. No powers to announce it. Okay? No one does it. On the, look, on the, after the fourth seal, there's no announcement by any beast power from the fifth, sixth, or seventh seal. Not at all. Now I notice, I love this, as in the times of the rider of the four horses, the rider, sangler, of the four different horses, there was a beast that announced the power every time the rider straddled another horse and come forth to ride, another kind of a beast come out and announced it. That's a great mystery. That is the mystery. Why? Announcing the mystery. Why isn't there one here on the fifth seal to announce it? Here it is. According to the revelation that the Lord Jesus gave me today, or this morning, early, that is that the mystery of the church ages are already finished at this time. The mystery of the Antichrist is revealed at this time. The Antichrist took his last ride. And we found him on this pale horse mixed with these many colors and rides all the way into perdition. We get on the trumpets and so forth when we teach that. I go to it now, but we get plumb off the subject again. And we, we go, he rides, that's the reason there's no one there. Now we know written cause some reason for something. I remember at the first beginning I said there can't be nothing without a reason. Right. Remember the little drop of ink? Mm-hmm. Now you got to find the reason. Well, there's some reason they didn't have to have a beast or power to announce the seal being broke. And... Only God can reveal why. Amen. That's all. Because it's all always in Him. Amen. But the reason that He reveals, and I, as I understand, that it is because the mystery of the book of redemption, as far as the Antichrist being revealed, and at the same time the church is gone, and these things don't even happen in the church age at all. That's right. They're, they're waiting the church age. The church absolutely is raptured at this time. The church goes up in the fourth chapter of Revelations and does not return until it comes back with this king in the 19th chapter. But these seals here are revealing what has been, what is, and what will be. See? And now, what was to be for the church age was revealed by uh, these seals. And now watch what takes it. The, the four stages of his rider has been revealed. The four stages of the Antichrist riding has been revealed at this time. Therefore, they don't have to have any more. And there was four living creatures of God to announce the rider as they rode. Four beasts are four powers. 
Now we know that beast, by interpretation of the terms of the Bible symbols, means power. Now let's get that close. The four or beast in the Bible represents a power among the people. Now, if we find out, like in Daniel, when he saw a certain uh, nation rise up, it would be a, maybe a bear holding a rib in his side, symbol. Then he seen another power raise up, a goat. It represented something. Then he seen a, another power raise up, and, and it was a leopard with so many heads. It represented a certain kingdom. Then he saw another rise up, a great lion with teeth and and stomp the residue. That represented a different power altogether. One was a, a kingdom of uh, Nebuchadnezzar and another type of, of a dream. Daniel saw a vision. Nebuchadnezzar dreamed a dream. But Daniel interpreted his dream and it was correctly with the vision. Amen. Hey, man. Oh, if you just know what happened. What happened before we left here? You understand? Well, six straight dreams cut exactly with the vision. Amen. Amen. A dream interpreted is a vision because a person not maybe being born with a subconscious to stay, be awake when he sees it, then God guts over in his subconscious and speaks to him, which he promised that in dreams in the last days he'd visit people and also in visions. See? Amen. Now, a vision's when you're wide awake, standing right like this, and certain things are revealed, and you stand and tell it just to write about it. See what happened and what's going to be and so forth. Well, now, a dream is when you are asleep and your five senses are inactive and in your, in your subconscious. You're somewhere because when you come back, you remember where you've been. Remember it all your life. See? So it's your subconscious. Then in order to see, as Congress and Nutshaw used to say, you can't be something that you hate. <laughs> and that's just about right. See? And then, if you're born to see her, now you see, to do that, those both consciences has to be right together. Not one here with five senses active, the other not here when you're asleep and the five senses are not active. But you see, when both of them you're born right together, you don't go to sleep. You just go from one to the other, not like that. You don't go to sleep. There's not enough room to go to sleep. <laughs> and you can't make yourself that way so gifts and callings are predestinated of God. They are, they are God's gifts and callings even without repentance, the Bible says. See? They were ordained before the foundation of the world. See? Now, now we find out that the uh, beast of Daniel, it meant that it was a power raising up amongst the people. All right. And, and John's vision sure also showed that it was powers, nations raising up. Like the United States appears in Revelation 13 as a lamb. And then, uh, if you want to know a difference, you say, well, that, that's talking about national power. It also represents holy power, too, a beast. Did you know that? Amen. Notice, Rebecca, when, uh, when the, the servant of uh, Abraham, Eliezer, when he came to get Becca, Rebecca, she, he mounted her up on a camel. The very camel she wore. And she rode this camel to meet her unseen bridegroom. Amen. The very thing she wore was the thing that took her to her future home and husband. Amen. And it's the same thing today. See? The very thing that the church is watering that is the seed. The seed of the word. It's the very word that becomes a lie and carries us to our unseen bridegroom. See? See? And look how perfectly uh, Isaac had left the home and was out in the fields away from his home when Rebekah saw him. And the church meets Christ in the air. And then he takes her back into the home, father's home where the mansions are prepared. Isaac took Rebekah the same way. And notice, it was love at the first sight. <laughs> oh my, she just run to meet him. That's the way the church will meet Christ in the air and forever be with him. Now, in terms of the Bible, these beasts are powers. Notice, I want, now I want you to notice 
The devil had his four uh, changing colored beasts to go forth on. He had his four beasts that was all three of them put into the color of one and made that one um, a pale horse, a white horse, red horse, black horse, and we've seen each one of those was a stage of his ministry. A stage of the early church that had formed into a denomination at Nicaea, the original Pentecostal church upon whom the Holy Ghost was poured out, coming down, took up an antichrist spirit, formed an organization, gave birth to some daughters of organization, changed his power three times and put him in one and made a pale horse and then given a name called death and rode him into eternity. That's as plain as it can be. No. Now, notice he's given this, this horse and he is riding. God, God has also as Every time I watch, when the Antichrist appeared first, what did he appear in? White horse. By innocence, he could be just a doctrine in the church. They wanted fellowship. Your fellowship's with Christ. But they wanted a fellowship. They just couldn't stand it. They wanted to get the, well, you know, like little cliques will rise up in the church. You you know what, you pastors. They they, uh, like to say birds of a feather. But if we're born again, brethren... Uh, that, that's not the attitude to take. Amen. No. Now, we, uh, we, we, if we see something wrong in our brethren, let us just pray and keep it before God and love that man till we bring him right into the presence of God. See, that's the way, really the way to do it. You know, Jesus said, there will be weeds in there because Jesus said there will be, but don't pull them up. You take the wheat with it. Okay? Just let him alone. He'll do, let him do the segregating when the time comes. See. Let it all grow together. Notice as the beast went out, uh, the Antichrist went out on a beast, his power. Oh, I love this. I just begin to feel religious right now, see? Maybe the stimulation. Notice, when the Antichrist, oh, they have them, them revelations in the presence of that ball of fire hanging there in a the room. To, oh, brother. Although I've seen it since a child, Every time it comes near me, the alarms. He, he almost puts in an unconscious condition. You never get used to it. You can't. It's too sacred. Notice, as the Antichrist went forth on his beast of ministry, there God sent forth a beast to combat it. See? I watched then every time the beast rode. On his horse, the Antichrist rode on his horse, on his beast to announce his ministry. God sent his beast also on his own that to announce his combat to it. Now the scripture says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God raises a standard against it. And so when the enemy went out as an Antichrist, God sent a certain type of power out to meet him. And then when they, he went out again as a red horse rider, another color, another power, another ministry, God sent another one entry to combat it, the Holy Church. Sent the third one. Again, God sent his third beast come and announce it. He sent the fourth one. God sent his fourth one. And then the Antichrist in and the church ages ended too at that time. Watch. Now, oh, I, this is really good. Now we see that the devils changing four, uh, four beasts meant what power they was revealed uh, to the what power he revealed to the world, and how they ended on this pale death horse. Now let's look at God's powers of these beasts to combat them. The first beast of God that he went out to meet the Antichrist with, the Antichrist spirit, when it says it's just his teaching. Now remember, when the Antichrist first wrote, he was in a teaching ministry. Amen. 
The Antichrist rode first in a teaching ministry. And what's the one that went to meet him? The lion. The lion of the tribe of Judah, which is the word. <laughs> when his false teaching went forth, the true word went to meet him. That's the reason we had an Irenaeus and a Polycarp and, uh, and, and, and uh, those fellows. A St. Martin. When that Antichrist was riding with his false teaching, God sent his teaching out the word, the line of the tribe of Judah, which is the word made manifest in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit there to manifest himself, which is the word. That's the reason the early church had healings and miracles and visions and power. Is because it was the living word in the form of the line of the tribe of Judah riding out to combat that. Amen. Hey man, now you got it? Amen. He sends his power, Antichrist. God sends his the word. Amen. Antichrist false teaching. The true teaching went with it. Amen. To combat it. Now that was the first one. Now, this was the first church apostolic that went to meet him. Now the second beast that the Antichrist sent out was a red beast which was to, that he rode on was to take uh, peace and from the earth and, and war. Now the second one that went to combat him was the ox beast. The ox means a labor, a beast of burden. And... Um, now, if we could just stop this a minute, let me get, let me show you. Be sure to see this. Uh, that's kind of might be a little puzzling to you, but let's get that high road here. Watch and see if it isn't a, a, a laboring church. You see, and to the angel of the church of Thyatira, write these things, saith the Son of God, who ha his eyes are like the flames of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works. See, they're coming all works now. See, because that's the, the one who's riding with. And uh, charity and service. See, it's all just... And faith and patience. And thy works, again, twice. Thy works. And the last to be more than the first. See, that shows that the Thyatira age, after the Antichrist got settled down and come into the Thyatira age, the little church could do nothing but just just simply labor. And another thing, the ox is a, also is a beast of sacrifice. See? They give their lives just as freely as they could give them. In the dark ages, a thousand years there, the Catholicism controlled the world. And they just went right in, yes or no, they didn't mind dying. If it was death, that's all right. Amen. They went and died anyhow. Amen. Why? The very spirit of the age. That's the reason I'm, that's the reason Irenaeus, that's the reason Polycarp, John, Paul, those great mighty men out there combating that thing. Amen. Paul saw it. He said, I know that after my departing, if wolves are going to enter in among you, brethren, teaching perverse things, and will draw you away. Right. Look at that stern little old apostle standing there, his back beat full of stripes, his eyes watering. But he could see farther than their, that scope playing it out down there. They see 120 million light years of light space. He could see plumb into eternity. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. There he was. And he predicted it and said that's what would take place. He said, also went on down to the other age to come. Now notice, there he was. Along after him, St. John lived the longest. And when St. John was trying to take all the sacred epistles, anoint him with the Holy Ghost and put them together to make the Bible, the Roman Empire caught him and put him on the Isle of Patmos. He was out there on the Isle of Patmos for the Word of God. Amen. Polycarp was helping translate it. I read the other day the letter that Mary herself wrote to Polycarp and uh, abrading, uh, not abrading him, but commanding him 
for being a gallant man that who could teach and accept the teaching of Jesus Christ of who was born of her from God. Mary's own note that she had wrote to Polycarp. Polycarp was fed to the lions, you know. Though it's burned, it's, it's too late for maternal lion loose in the arena. And so they tore down a bathroom and old bathhouse there and put him in, a, in a, an arena and, and burned him. And on his robe coming down, he's walking with his head down. The Roman centurion said, you're an old man and well respected. Why don't you denounce that thing? He just kept looking towards heaven and a voice spoke from somewhere. They couldn't understand where it said, Polycarp, don't fear I'm with you. Why, he was standing by that word. And when they begin to pile the boards on him to burn him, there's a heavenly music come down and, a, and the anthems from some angelic somewhere sang the song. He never even one time batted an eye to the song. That's gallant man. That's man who can stand. The martyrs down through the ages there suffered terribly. But what was the? They were under the inspiration, the Spirit of God, the power. Hallelujah. I don't forget this church. And you, brother, on tape, I want you to examine this. How could man do anything else besides the power of God that had been released to them? I'm going to set this box up here to represent that. If God sends a certain spirit among them, that's the only thing that they can work by is the spirit that works among them. Amen. Now we will prove to you by the history of the church and by the, the opening of the seals and the powers that let loose and watch exactly the church responded to the, the anointing and they couldn't do nothing else. Now, the first of that line, that word, that pure unadulterated word, the second in Thyatira was the ox. And it was a, a burden, a beast of burden, pardon me. And it was also a sacrificial beast. And wasn't that exactly the poor little church? Uh, Rome had settled down there to a thousand years of dark ages and anything that didn't profess to be of the Roman church was put to death immediately. And they had to labor, go from place to place. You Masons, I'll call your attention. You remember the sign of the cross? <laughs> ah, you, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Now, notice. Now, if you, if you notice that was packing and preserving that Bible. See? And they had to labor among one another. There you are, the ox. And when it come time, we read it last night, see, when the thing went forth, and the sacrifice come, and they had to go, he said, don't you hurt the wine and oil. Yeah. What did they do? They willingly would have walked up there and died. <laughs> they didn't care because the spirit of the church in that day was sacrifice. Labor. And they walked up just as freely as they could walk, anointed with the true spirit of God of that age. <laughs> And die like heroes of sacrifice. Thousands times thousands. Sixty-eight million of them. On the record. Ox. Sacrifice. Oh my. Do you understand it? Okay. Alright. Now sacrifice. It only could labor in that age. To combat the great opposition for that one thousand years. Now, the third beast that went out from the devil was this uh, black horse. See? Now, the third beast uh, went out power from God to combat him. To combat the powers of the black horse was a man, cunning, smart, with the wisdom of God. You know, a man is as smarter than any of the beast. And he's smarter because he's outwitting. Mostly. He's cunning, shrewd. See? And he, the, the age from the dark age now, coming out from the dark age down this other side when this black horse is riding, when they charge for their, 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 their sacrifices and everything they've done, and money was just all you know how it was. Now, the next 
thing went out to combat that was a beast with the face of a man. Smart, educated, shrewd, fine, anointed, but that spirit of that day. You notice it? Now he went to combat him with the cunningness of God's wisdom with him. That was the age of the Reformation. Martin Luther, John Wesley, and so forth. See? It was the Reformation. Swingling. And, uh, oh, who all? Knox, Calvin, and who all? See? Went out. It was a cunningness. Now you watch. Exactly from the Dark Age, from the Reformation, this way. Watch. It was the shrewdness of man. You drop your windows just a little bit. I believe people getting kind of a little warm. Uh, maybe in there. If you just pull the windows down just a little bit, cause it... I know if me saying you're preaching getting hot, I know you're bound to be out there. But notice, it was the shrewdness of man. Now, do you understand that third beast that Satan sent out, he becomes shrewd too. What? Major wheat for a penny. Three majors of barley for a penny. See? Oh, my. See, the money-making scheme. The shrewdness to get the gold of the world and the wealth to brought into it. It's exactly to fulfill. That's what began to charge for prayers and for made a place called purgatory and played their ancestors out and or you had to will your deeds and everything, your property. The church was state was the same and the church taking your property over. And um, don't you see some of these events as this day still has that same anointing on them? Yeah. That's right. That's right. Amen. Making old people give up their pensions and deed their homes over to certain things. Wow, brother. Amen. I, don't, I don't want to get on that, see. But now, uh, I'll stay right with this. I look back and see where I'm going. Now I notice, that man, that's up to them. That's up to them. I, I don't have one thing to do with me. I'm just responsible for this year. Now, notice. The, the beast come to combat it now was man and we all know that this beast of man this power of man and his intellectuals recognize that that kosher that Martin Luther had in his hand when he was climbing those steps he said this is the blood of Jesus Christ this is the body of Jesus Christ and Luther threw it down and said, It's bread and wine. Amen. It's not the body of Christ because it's been exalted and sitting at the right hand of God Amen. making intercession. Amen. See? Wisdom. Eh? Man. And when John Wesley come along, they just swingly and come in and Calvin and they got the church to a place on security till they didn't want more revivals. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. That was all. And they just lived any kind of lives. The Lutheran church is so twisted. And the Anglican church, oh my, the whole country become corrupt. Just like it is now. The churches have twisted. Uh, when uh, King Henry the, the Eighth and uh, come into England and uh, after Bloody Mary and all these things taking place and then the church was so full of violence and corruption many claiming Christianity and living with four or five wives or doing anything they wanted to do and carrying on and filth John Wesley studying the scripture and watching it was revealed to him that the blood of Jesus Christ sanctifies the believer and you shouldn't then what did he do? he come out in another reformation he saved the world in his day like Luther did. See, what was it? That man beast power going on. You give man wisdom of understanding that the thing is wrong. That isn't the blood of Jesus Christ. That isn't the, the body of Jesus Christ. That represents the body. Yeah. Amen. See, that's a still great fuss between Catholic and Protestant now. It's the only thing you can't get together on right now. So everything else they can get together on but that. These example, councils are having... Notice, now, but this... But they, they couldn't get together on that. See? That one is the blood and it says it's a literal blood that the priest has the power to change this bread to the literal body of Christ. That's what the little tabernacle is in the, the, in the church. You know, that's the reason they make signs and any kind of a pagan offer is to go by you know, and bow themselves and kip their hats and so forth. That is not to the building. It's to that kosher that's in the, the tabernacle. And 
Notice how Satan shrewdly pulled that. But see, at that time upon the man's being, see, God put a spirit of wisdom upon man to understand that's wrong. Amen. Now that was to combat the third beast that had got the church so corrupt that he was riding that it was terrible. The reformers. Uh, uh, what did they do? Then they, in the reformers' age, they brought the church from its pagan ceremonies of idolatry back to God again. See, that's what the beast went for, that cunning cement rider to do it. Now, but read now verse 3 and uh, Revelation 3 and 2 just a minute. Now, I got it marked down here for some reason. Now, this is, comes in now the Lutheran age and the Reformers age. Revelation 3 and 2. What they did, they organized as soon as Luther got his church started on, he organized it. All right, same thing Wesley did. Same thing Pentecost did. Exactly, organize it. And what do they do? They take up the same system that they come out of. Amen. See? Now watch this. Revelation speaking to this Sardis church, to the angel of the church is the first verse, of course. See? Now, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. That is the word that you've been taught. See, the things that remain that are ready to die. He's right then ready to start back in an organization just like the Catholic church you come out of. See? For I have not found thy works perfect before God. There you go. There's a, there he goes right back again. Don't you see why organizational systems is wrong? Amen. Who started it? Did God? Did the apostles? The Roman Catholic Church did it. Now I just let any historians say different. <laughs> It's not there. They are. They say they're the mother church and they are. But they organize the thing and put a system with man's head to it. Amen. We didn't take one man like they did. We take a whole council of men and put them together. Amen. And then you really got a confusion. Amen. That's right. Yeah. How can a council anyhow? It's just like we think democracy is right. I believe it is too, but it'll never work, right? It can't. With a bunch of rickies around here to run it, how in the world are you going to get it right? Amen. You can. Notice the real thing was a godly king. Amen. Notice the beast. The third beast now was the cunningest of a man. And he represented the reformers that went forth from the idol of, of taking and say, This is the bread. This is the wine. See? The Antichrist has still got something symbolizes symbolizes Christianity. He's got to. Because he's against, you see. And that if he's got to be against something, now if he come all along and say, well, I'm a Buddha. Well, that has got nothing to all do. That's just a heathen to begin with. But the Antichrist is cunning. He's got all kinds of things that represents Christianity. They're only got off on the other side something against the original doctrine of it. See, that's what makes him Antichrist. See? So the reformers, when the beast went forth in the form of a of a man to combat that. Now don't forget this, class. Don't forget it. See? Remember it. All the days of your life. See? These beasts are correct. It's thus saith the Lord. See? Amen. Notice. Idolatry brought the, the man beast went forth with the power of God by wisdom that God gave him and brought the church from idolatry back to God. But in the, we find out in that same church age, when they started to denominate to do the same thing that they did in the beginning, Rome did, now she's going to make daughters to that church. And what does she say? Said now that you, I haven't found you perfect and you got the strength in that, the little strength you got left. Now, listen to him warn him in Revelations again, 3.3. 3. Let's get, well, I believe I got it just a few minutes ago. Remember from how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. Just, in other words, remember that you come out of such a corruption as that. Amen. See? And, look here, if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come unto thee as a thief. 
And thou shalt know, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. On down, he's going to move the candlestick. See. So that's it. What is the delight of the church? And she went right into the same organizational system of pagan darkness that she come out of. And there she remains today. Well, honest-hearted people thinking that that's the truth, just the same as Catholics are, and the Protestants laugh at the Catholic when it's a six of one, a half a dozen of the other, and exactly Amen. according to the Lord. Man's with you. Now, notice. Oh, how I love this. Listen to him now, warn him. Now, now we, you perfectly agree, every one of you, now if you don't write me a question, that those beasts are exactly identified in each age as the Bible has identified them here. Amen. That's exactly what they've done. Their history shows what they've done. We look right here and see what they've done. And here are them beasts. Uh, I, I never knew that before. I was just sitting there. I could just see it moving up there just the same as you looking at me. And it's got to be right. Because it's right here with the Bible. So how are you going to do anything else but say it's right? right. Notice. Now, the fourth beast that was sent forth to combat the Antichrist in this last beast. Are you ready? Amen. The last beast that was sent forth or the last power to combat the Antichrist who was against the teaching of God, the Antichrist, was an eagle. See? The fourth living beast was an eagle. I used to study the ages, study the scriptures. Yeah. Is the eagle, and in the Bible, the last age was an eagle age, and God likens the eagle to his prophets. Yeah. Yeah. See, it, now watch. The last age, the eagle age, a, a revealer of the true word. Amen. See? Amen. Before God moves to action, like He did in the days of Noah, He sent forth an eagle. Amen. When He brought Israel and Pharaoh's army was ready to go, He sent an eagle. Amen. Amen. Every time He sends an eagle at the last end of it. Amen. And here He sends an eagle again. Amen. That's exactly what the words are. How can you make it anything else? Amen. Amen. Sends an eagle. Oh, Why? A revealer of the truth that's been fallen all through the age. Amen. So how in the world could the uh, the ox or the uh, or the uh, man or whatever a beast was riding? How could it ever be revealed until the eagles come? <laughs> they had their place. They were godly sent beasts, just the same as anybody else was. The lion, that was original. That's where the Antichrist come up and, and combat. Then he raised up another power. He sent a power to meet it. Then he raised up another power. He sent another power to meet it. And then the last power, he brings down the eagle to restore the children back to the original faith again. The eagle age. Then you notice, there's no more beast. That's all of it. <laughs> That's the end. Now, if you would take now Revelations 10, 1, 7, uh, I've been referring to it. Remember, in the last messenger's age, see, what was to happen? All of the mysteries of God Amen. would be revealed. Amen. The eagle. Amen. 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 Now you see the four beasts that rode? That was perfectly right. You believe that? Amen. Right, now here's each age or each power that rode behind it. And there is a scripture that shows what the enemy's rider did. That's been revealed in these seals. And also it's been revealed now that each beast power that God sent out to combat it hits exactly on the dot. Up to the eagle time. Amen. Now, if this is the last time... There will come an eagle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And to that, I remember, now in the days that the lion came, the original word, about one hundredth of them listened to the lion. In the days that the, uh, the ox came, just a teeny little drop of them listened to the ox yeah. message. 
In the days that the, the man come, he worked among man, you see. So he was shrewd. He got a little group out, and what did he do? Satan seen that, so he just sends them right back and marries them into it. And remember, when the eagle finally comes, it'll be one hundredth of one percent <laughs> that'll listen. It's an eagle age. Remember, it's all these other riders. And then even Jesus predicted if he didn't haste his coming, there wouldn't be any flesh at all saved. Isn't that true? Is that the scripture? Amen. See where we're at then, don't you, brother and sister? Amen. See where we're at? God, I'm so glad. I, I, I don't know what to do. This is not me standing up here to, to talk. I'm in here too. I, I'm among you. It's me. I got family. And I got brothers and sisters that I love and the God of heaven kind enough to come down and, and reveal that thing by His own by visions that's been proved for 30 years is the truth. We believe. Here. Yes, we believe. We have a right. Amen. Some scientific search has proved it. The vindication of the Word has proved it. And we're here. And this revelation comes from God and it's the truth. Have you caught anything? Yes, sir. I just wondered if you was. Yes, sir. I might not have to tell you. Then, so notice, notice, wonderful. Now, now, notice now. And then according to the, uh, the time that God was going to deliver the antediluvian world, He sent the eagle, and time He's going to deliver Israel, He sent the eagle, do you believe that the time even on John on the Isle of Patmos this message was so perfect that he couldn't trust it with an angel? Amen. You know, an angel is a messenger. But do you know the messenger was a prophet? Amen. You believe that? Amen. Let's prove it. Revelation 22. Let's see if it was an eagle. See, he was a, sure he's an angel, he's a messenger. But it was a prophet. That reveal this whole book of Revelations to him. Amen. Revelations, the twenty-second chapter and the nineteenth verse. I believe that's right. If I've got it written down here, twenty-two nineteen, I may be wrong. No, uh, twenty-two nine. That's what it is. I'm looking at it. Twenty-two nine. That's right. Oh yes, sir. Then said he to me, "See, thou do it not, for I am of thy fellow servants." And of thy brethren, the prophets. Amen. Watch what John seen here. I, John, saw these things and heard them. Now he's closing. This is the last chapter. And when I heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed these things, or showed me these things. And he, then the angel, see. Then said he to me, See thou do it not. No true prophet would be worshipped. Or messenger of any kind. Right. Right. Amen. Then said he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brother, the prophets. And of them that keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. See? Now, the book was so important that it is the Word of God. Now watch. And when the Word of God is brought forth, it's got to be brought by the prophet because that's who the Word of God is going to be. I was expecting to get a question on that in, it, in this box here. I thought I just beat a bit of a bit. I just feel there's one in there. That's all. I, I just thought I'd get to it. See, see, every word of God is brought. The Bible doesn't change the system at all. It's the same thing. It's got to come to this seer that we're expecting to arrive. Now, notice. Revelations 10, 1, 7. Now, let's read the, the ninth verse again. Now we get we now before we go to that verse, I want to, to ask you something. Do you see perfectly before we leave these seals? Now remember, there is no more power that goes out after that eagle. 
Amen. No more. Amen. Every time the Antichrist sent forth something, God sent a power. Antichrist sent another power, God sent something to combat it. Then he sent another power, God sent something to combat it. And then when he got down to the eagle, that was his word back like it was in the first place. Now watch. Isn't the prophet that we're looking to come, some man anointed with the with the spirit uh, like Elijah, it won't be Elijah, of course, but it'll be a man like that, will come down and his very ministry is to send to restore back to this fallen people in these denominational twists back to the original faith of the Father. Now, if that don't tie that Bible together, I, I don't know what does. I, 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 I can't say no more about it because that's it. <laughs> you just arrive. That's the truth. You take anything from there, you twist it. So it's just got to be that way. Now, notice, now in the ninth verse, souls under the altar. Now, here's where I'm going to get some real uh, <laughs> disagreements. <clears throat> but I just watched just a minute. Just, see, I thought that too, but it didn't come that way. We've, I've always thought that these souls under the altar were the, the, the martyrs of the early church. And I'm sure that uh, Dr. Uriah Smith and every one of them says it is, see. But I thought so myself. But when the Holy Spirit showed the vision to it, it wasn't. That isn't the soul. I, I said, well, I, I don't know about that. Well, now, just a minute. We'll find out. No. These are not the souls of the, uh, uh, of the bride church. Not at all. We thought that was a bride church waiting there. Souls are the altar. You see, crying, how long, Lord, how long? Let me read it again now so we get it right. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. See? The word of God and the testimony which they held. Now don't, don't move from there. Just a minute. See? And they cried, How long, Lord, how long? See? A holy and true, does thou judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given to every one of them. And it was said to them, that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and, uh, and brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Now, for they at this time, if you notice, this fifth seal being opened, see, the church is gone. Amen. Amen. It just can't be the souls of the, the early church. Now, now, please, if you ever did give this attention now, because this is a great controversy, so I want you to listen real close now. If you got your papers and things to write with, now, I want you to notice. Now, these cannot be them souls because the, the souls of the, of the righteous martyr and the righteous people, the church, the bride, has done been tuck up. So they wouldn't be under the altar. They'd be in glory with the bride. Now what? For they are gone in the rapture in the fourth chapter of Revelation. It was taken up. Now, who are these souls? That's the next thing. Who are they then if they're not the early church? This is Israel. That's to be saved as a nation. All them that are predestinated. That's Israel. That's Israel itself. You say, oh, wait a minute. You say they can't. Oh, yes, they are to be saved. Here, let's settle it just a minute. i got four or five scriptures. I'll take one. Let's take Romans just a minute and find out if they are. Let's take the book of Romans and go to the, the 11th chapter of Romans. And we'll find out. Just, let's just read it and then we'll have it by ourselves. A Romans 11th chapter, the 25th and 26th verse. Now listen to Paul here. And Paul said, if anyone else, even an angel, preached any other gospel, but he was to be cursed. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of the mystery. 
lest you should be wise in your own conceit. There you are. The blindness, in part, is happened to Israel until the fulfilling fullness of the Gentiles become in. The last Gentile bride he brought in for the bride. The blindness come to Israel for that purpose. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion a deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness for Jacob. Right? Now, they are Israel that's under this altar. What? Israel was blinded for the very purpose of us being saved. You believe that? Now, who blinded them? God. God blinded His own children. No wonder Jesus standing there at the cross and them Jews howling for His blood as His own kids. And He was the Scripture. <laughs> he was Himself the Word. And here He knowing that those people would have gladly received Him and that's the reason He blinded them. So they wouldn't recognize Him. He come in such a humble way and blinded them to it that they wouldn't receive it. See? The Scripture said they'd do it. And He blinded Was blinded. Jesus pitied them. Even so much as He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They were blind. Paul said they were blinded for a cause, for us. Notice. Now, I want you to watch this real close. They were given robes. They didn't have them. They were given robes. White robes, each one of them. Now the saints now have already had one. They get it here. But there they were given robes. And the saints already had theirs and gone on. See? See, they had... Had not they uh, see they had not a chance because they were blinded by God their own Father, so that the grace of God could be fulfilled, so the bride could be took from the Gentiles. Is that right? Amen. Let, let me show you a beautiful type here and Joseph. Joseph, the spirit man, the eagle. He was born among his brothers, just like the real churches among the others. And he could interpret dreams and see visions and the rest of them hated him. Yeah. His father loved him. Notice. Then he was out, oust by his brother, not by his father. Right. Out by his brethren and was sold for almost 30 pieces of silver, thrown into a ditch and supposed to be dead, taken up and set at the right hand of Pharaoh. Yeah. And because he was ousted by his brethren, see, he was given a Gentile bride. Amen. Not of his own people. Through there he bore Ephraim and Manasseh, which was added into Israel. As Israel blessed him by crossing his hands from the youngest to the oldest, the cross of blessings from the Jew back, or from the Jew to the Gentile. See? Crossed his hands to the younger son, which is the younger church to come in, the, the mother church stood in the sun. She brought forth this baby. And um, notice to get him, Israel crossed his hands in the type. And Joseph, them same children, was a Gentile mother. The bride of Israel back there become cross from the old Orthodox over to the Christian uh, way by uh, the Holy Spirit that crossed Israel's hands. He said, God has crossed my hands. He had nothing to do with it. Notice, then Joseph, rejected by his own brethren, his own people, took a Gentile bride, just exactly what Jesus done. Amen. Rejected by the Jews, took a Gentile bride. Now, let's read something here. i got a scripture on Acts 15. And all oh, this is just kind of it's what we're supposed to teach it anyhow. Uh, uh, now, I believe I have this right. 
Read Acts 15, 14. All right. I hope this is right now. All right. Simon has declared how God... Let's start the 13th verse. And after they had held their peace, James answered. I see what had happened. They went to the Gentiles. See? And the fuss was on because they were Jews. See? And after they had held their peace, James answered saying, Man and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon, that's Simon Peter, has declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for His name. <laughs> See, my wife's name was Broy. When I took her, she was a brand. <laughs> Jesus takes His church out, or His bride, out of the Gentiles. It's a scripture. Type, it's like Joseph was. I notice this. Now these souls under the altar, uh, uh, the, this, these um, souls, understanding now that it's under the altar, why they were martyred by sinful man like Eichmann. Yeah. See? They're holding right on, millions of them. See? But they remain Jews. Now remember, what was it? They were killed for the Word of God's sake. Not for the testimony of Christ. Did you understand that? But remember, the church come in, also the martyrs of the church, was for the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. How many knows that? Here, here, here. All right. Now, but these didn't have the testimony of Jesus Christ. For the Word of God and for the testimony which they held. The Jews and Hitler hated them. So did Eichmann. So did Stalin all the rest of the world. See? But they stayed true to what they believed. And they killed them because they were Jews. But you know Martin Luther kind of had that same idea too? It's the truth. He said all Jews should be taken out. They're Antichrist. See? But he was just under another dispensation. <laughs> Didn't see it? Didn't see the Word. Now the Word, truth comes forth. How you go to ever blind out Israel? You can't do it. Now, Oh, how could that prophet stand up that day and say, uh, you look like a unicorn, Israel. One that's trying to show him the worst parts of it. He said, why? He said, hey, whoever blesses you will be blessed and whoever curses you will be cursed. Amen. That's right. Amen. Oh, how do you go do it? One time they thought God would forget when the prophet seen that dark thing coming for the Jews, that man standing there and the word of God poured to him. He said, oh Lord, are you going to forsake your people? He said, what's that laying there by? He says, a major stick. He said, how high is it to heaven? Major. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Deep as the sea, he said, I can't do said, another can I, neither can I have ever forget him. Sir, he ain't going to forget her. He had to blind his own child. Now think of that. Blind his own child to give us a chance and we turn it down. Now don't that make you feel about so little that you could crawl under a concrete block with a Amen. ten gallon hat on and never touch it. Amen. Uh, that's right. That's pretty small. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Oh my. Yes, they helped for the word of God. They were Jews. They had their laws. They stayed with it. Remember last night now? They stayed with that. And they were Jews. They had the law, and the law was the word of God. And they stayed right by it. That's right. And for the testimony they held, they were martyred. And here were souls under the altar. After the church had been gone. Now what? They had in their blindness martyred their Messiah. And now they were reaping for it. They realized it. They recognized it. It had just gone on. They seen them when they come before the altar of God. But now the grace of God is to them. Watch. Now they could not by no means be saints because it already be robed. But here they are now just souls under the altar for the word of God and the testimony of the health of being God's people, the Jews. But now watch. The grace of God comes to them and Jesus gives them each one a white robe. <laughs> Watch, plumb over after the church is gone. Amen. Because they were loyal Amen. to their cause. Amen. 
and they were blinded and they didn't know it. They didn't know it. They were playing exactly the part that God had ordained from the play. Amen. And here, here John looks over and sees souls around the altar. Now watch. He sees those souls. Watch what he calls them. They cry, Lord, how long? Watch. Just a little while longer. Let's get that history. Go down right through the scripture. They realized they had murdered their Messiah. See? And they didn't know it. And then they realized they got, they got murdered back to pay for it. They're doing their own. And now, look what a thing they had to do. See, they were guilty of murder, so they got murdered. See? They cried out, His blood be on us! That's right. Yeah. That's right. And they were blinded. Now, if they hadn't been blinded, God said, Let them alone. They're not worthy. But then if they was blinded by God, His grace reached down to them. Amen. Amen. Talk about amazing grace. Amen. And if each one of them arose because all Israel will be saved. Everyone has his name written. That's right. Jesus gave them robes like Joseph did to his brethren. A tithe. Look, when Joseph stood there and when he finally he made himself known there by the altar. His own altar. In his palace. His throne. He said, everybody leave me. Amen. His wife was over in the palace where the bride would be. And he said to him, he said, don't you know me? Hey, speaking Hebrew now. I'm your brother, Joseph. Oh my, they said, now, nah. oh, you're going to get us away in a minute. Wait a minute. God did that for a purpose. Had you to throw me out in order to save life. Glory, there you are. So don't, don't be angry with yourselves. Remember Joseph said that? He said, don't be angry with yourself. Everything's all right now. It's all over. God sent me here ahead of you. You know, the Bible said, they'll say to him when they see him, God says, say, uh, you're the Messiah, we know. But, but well, what about them scars? See? He said, oh, I got them in the house of my friends. Yeah. <laughs> friends. And then the, when they realize it, them that slept, the 144,000, the Bible said that they'll separate one house from the other Amen. and take days just to cry and wail and walk up and down the floor. Yeah. How did we do it? How did we do it? While well, we crucified our own Messiah. Yeah. They're crying like a homewood for its only begotten son. Yeah. Yeah. How did we do it? Them Jews are, they're the most religious people in the world. Yeah. God's chosen, but He blinded them to take us and we turned it down. Yeah. Oh, help us, Lord. What is the judgment of the Gentile church? Right, there you are. See? Blinded purposely by God. So that He could get us a bride for it. Jesus. Take Him out of it. See? And four types and everything. Now you see who the souls are? Oh, my God. They're not the martyred saints. They done gone. <laughs> That's right. Notice. They were, they've done gone, see? So these are given robes, each one of them. And now I want you to notice. But now, God's grace stoops to them. Jesus gives them each a white robe, like Joseph did his grace to his brother. Now watch it. Though they had tried to rid Joseph also, but his grace reached out down to him. Oh, it's all right. That's all right. You didn't mean to do that, but see, that was God doing that. See? God let you all do that so He could run me out and bring me down here so I could save lives for people. These Gentiles here are where I got my wife from. I wouldn't have had no wife if, if I'd stayed back up there. And I, I love my wife. She's got me these children here. And, so, I, I, and I, now I'm coming to get you all. Now you all go to have good too. I'm going to bring you down here. We're all going to live together as one big family. The one thing I want to ask is my old father still living. <laughs> And watching what he did to little Benjamin, which is a type of the 144,000 we'll get later. See, what he did, he just run right quick to Benjamin, fell on his neck and started hugging him. His little brother that had been born into the family after he had been gone. By his mother. The first church, the Orthodox church, the 144,000 were born in his absence. While he's away, to get his Gentile bride. Oh my, don't that just do something to you? Yeah. There it is. So you see who they are? There they are. 
Notice. Now, though they had tried to get rid of Joseph, his grace reached to him. Though they tried to get rid of Jesus, he still comes right back around because he's dying to give each one a white robe. He's going to take them around in home anyhow. Doesn't make a bit difference. Because he doesn't say, I'll save them all anyhow. <laughs> now, verse 10. Notice. They asked for revenge. See? Now, if that had been the bride, it had been like Stephen's father forgiven them. <laughs> but these are Jews. Let's just come in, see. They asked for revenge. Notice. Again, see, again, he said. Notice, it's not... He said, it's thy brethren, the Jews. The hundred... Now, they wanted revenge. They said, oh, we're going to... Uh, we, we want you to revenge us down there. He said, just a little while now. Just a little while. For, notice, let me read it here. It's in the, the 10th verse. Part. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord? Holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given to every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season. See? What? A little season. Until their fellow servants, see, now, what is it? The prophets now are preaching to Israel, see. But thy fellow servants also, thy fellow servants, and also thy brethren that should be killed, see, the ones predestinated to be done so, see, should be killed, as they were, should be fulfilled, see. In other words, it's per destinated to them. It's the scriptures that they have to do it. And just rest for a little while. Now you got your robes, you're going home, and just sit there a little while. See, wait just a little bit. Now notice. Now, notice. Thy brethren, thy brethren, have yet be killed, which means the 144,000 yet to be called in the tribulation. Yeah. One hundred and forty-four thousand is called. Wish we had time. We might get it tomorrow night, if the Lord willing. We, but just before we get in on the seal, see. Also, now what? They have to be martyred by the Antichrist that we just come to. And notice in his last ride where he breaks that covenant with them Jews down there in their shul. See, these Jews, one hundred and forty-four thousand, is to be called out by the two witnesses of Revelations eleven. Now, you remember, they was to prophesy. You've read that. How many's read that? Sure, we all went and read the Scripture. And they prophesy, these two witnesses prophesy, in the time of Daniel's second half of the 70th week. That is the last three and a half years. Remember how we took the Daniel 70th week? I said we need it when we got in here. I didn't know why, but I, something told me we need it, and here we are. Okay. See? Notice. In the time of Daniel, now I remember, Daniel was told that the Messiah would come, the prince, the Messiah rather, and he would prophesy. Israel still had 70 weeks left. And in the midst of the 70 weeks, the Messiah would be cut off and the daily sacrifice taken away. Is that right? Yeah. But there were still three and a half weeks determined. In this block, he takes the Gentile bride. Now she goes up. And when she goes up, Two prophets arise Amen. to Israel. See? And those souls that's been martyred now, down to your real true Jews, down to there that had their name on the book, that lived the right life and done the right thing, lived Judaism to the dot, they were martyred by Eichmann and many others, honest people, millions of them. You're down there and them Germans shot them to death and murdered them and killed them and hung them on fences and burned them up and cremated them and everything else. That bloodless... Uh, blood-hearted, hungry Hitler and Stalin and Mussolini and all that people that hated them Jews. I think that's one of the, one of the things that's holding this nation together because they've already respected the Jew. Amen. 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 Give him a place. You honor the Jew and God will honor you. Amen. Now there's a bunch of Jews that's renegades. Just like there's Gentiles the same way. But the real Jew, God's put his name on the book before the foundation of the world. And here he was murdered down this time. And remember, think of it now, how perfect this is. Right after them millions of slaughtered Jews, innocent people by the nations of the world. Here the scripture says right in this time, 
that they're each one under the altar realize what's happened and they're given white robes. And they said, well, why, why can't we go back to the kingdom right now? The Jewish kingdom's to be set on the earth, you know. John said the kingdom of heaven. To be set, not this is the kingdom of the gospel, you see. But the kingdom of the Jews will be preached by these, these two prophets. So notice the, the, the kingdom of the earth here. The kingdom of heaven is preached by the Jews. Uh, to, I mean, to the Gentile. The kingdom of your own earth is to be set up in the millennium. Uh, after the millennium of the Jews. Now notice. Notice this now. Hear why, they, why they're preaching. See? Before these... These prophets ever rise on the scene. These Jews that had to die under Eichmann them is each one of them that is predestinated is given by grace a white robe. Amen. Amen. Each one of them given a white robe. Hallelujah. Notice. Now, what happens? As soon as that takes place, I'm watching that clock back there, and I know we're, we're getting late, but I don't want to see uh, uh, that notion that poor fellow standing there. Uh, God help you, brother, and I hope each one of us is given a white rope that day. <laughs> standing, changing back and forth with legs are hurt, and somebody worked all day. I know what that is. And uh, look here, and some of the poor little women stand. I notice some of these men give the women their seats, and somebody else gives some poor little mother with a baby, and I, 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 I see all that, <laughs> and I'm sure he does. Notice. But I don't want to keep you too long. But I just get you to see the message. That's all I want you to do. See? Now notice. These Jews, I have to do this in order to, to let you see the revelation of this seal. See what it is. Yeah, these souls are under the altar. And who they are. Now notice. In the time of Daniel now, the second half of the 70th week. Now remember, Messiah was to be cut off in the midst. That's the middle. Well, what's half of seven? Three and a half. How long did Christ preach? Three and a half. That's right. Wow. But there is determined yet to the people, what, another three and a half years. But well, during this time, well, see, what happens is the Gentile bride is selected in the seven church ages and goes up. And when it does that way, all these Jews is martyred along there because of blindness, laying under the altar. God comes over and says, you see what it was? Now I'll give each one of you a robe. They said, how long, Lord, are we going in now? I said, no, 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 no. Your fellow man, the Jews, has got to suffer a little bit yet. they got to be martyred like you was martyred. The beast has got to get down when he breaks his covenant. Now notice. And now notice. Once, now just remember, these prophets are to prophesy according to Revelation 11. You, uh, you raise your hand, you read it, see? And they're given power, and we're going to find out who they are just in a minute, Lord willing. Now notice who these prophets are. And now, the Bible tells it here. Yeah. Sure it does, sure. Yeah. See? Now notice, in the middle of this three and a half weeks now that they're prophesying down here, and the, the Revelation here said, and they, they prophesied a thousand three hundred and two score days. If, now the regular Jewish calendar, the regular time of God's calendar is exactly 30 days in a month. The Roman calendar, what makes it up? The regular calendar is 30 days a month. Now, if you want to take 30 days and add three and a half years to it and see how 30 days you are, what you got? 1,203 score days. 1,203 score days. 60 days. Exactly three and one half years. Now you see, there's no mistake for that. There it is, just fits together like a, a dovetail coming together. No. Two prophets preached for three and a half years to the Jews. In that is called out the 144,000. And then, notice, these two prophets are exactly Moses and Elijah. Amen. Amen. Now, look. Look. They're, look at their ministry. Now, watch what these prophets do. They have power to smite the earth with a plague as often as they will. Who did it? Moses. Amen. They have power to shut the heavens and it rain not in the day of their ministry. Who closed the heavens for three and a half years? Amen. There they are. That's them. See, it's see the man when he dies, he doesn't change his status. He doesn't change his makeup. See, look when when before uh, when Saul had backslid. And there was no prophets in the land. He couldn't understand what to do. What to do. He was up against it. He was going to battle. He went to the witch of Endor. Now, just the blood of bulls and goats, she could do this. And she called up the spirit of Samuel. And when Samuel come up, there he stood in his prophet robe. Not only that, but he's still a prophet. Hallelujah. He said, why would you call me out of my rest? 
Hallelujah. Amen. He said, seeing you become an enemy to God. He said, but this time tomorrow night you're going to fall in the battle, and this time tomorrow night you'll be with me. Amen. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> See, not only he was still a prophet, Amen. Right. and these fellows are still prophets. Amen. Now we're going to get a little deep in that just in a few minutes. And, oh my, how I love that word. No wonder man should not live by bread alone. <laughs> Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. These two prophets are Moses and Elijah according to their works being repatterned again. That, that has always been their ministry. Now, notice just as they did, that didn't change them. Remember, ne- these guys never died. Watch just that. Now, don't confuse, before we get away from this, don't confuse Elijah's fifth time ministry with his fourth time ministry. Now, I've been telling you the Gentile church is looking for Elijah. Uh-huh. Right. And here he is over at the Jew. Remember, he can't come four. That's, that's a, any of his number. He has to be five. The first time he come, is Elijah himself. Yes. Next time he come, he was Elisha. Yes. Next time he come, he was what? John the Baptist. Yes. The next time he comes, is for the seventh angel. Yes. And the fifth time he comes, he's with Moses. Yes. Over yes. Yes. That's Sarah. Don't confuse me. Five, if you know your your numerals of the Bible, five is a number of laboring grace. And that's what he's done. Now watch, you don't know where it is. Was Jesus a labor of grace? J E S U S. Five. L A B O R. Is that right? Labor for for love for you. And if you get to him, how do you come? By what? F A I T H N L A B O R. Is that right? Labor is the number. Grace. All right. To the believers. Notice the first Elijah. That was him. The second was Elisha. The third was John. The fourth was the seventh angel or the last messenger to the church according to Malachi 4 and Revelation 10 7. Now, the fifth time, he is a messenger to the Jews, to the 144,000. To the Jews at the church is gone. I, I just feel a little funny. See? See? Look, if some thinks, I want you to get this now, if some still thinks that Malachi 4 to restore the people is the same thing he's going to do down there to the Jews and think it's all the same. Let me straighten that out for you just a minute. See, it would be a little bit confusing. Because remember, in Malachi 4 it says to return the faith of the fathers, or the children, back to the father. See, back to the father. Now let me show you the difference of the ministry. If he comes to return the faith of the children back to the fathers, he would deny Christ. He'd go back to the law. Is that right? The fathers kept the law. You get it? Notice, when Elijah, and when he come to fulfill his ministry in Malachi 4, see, as Malachi 4, Elijah was by himself. But when he come to minister to the Jews of Revelation 11, he has Moses with him. Amen. So there's no confusion. Out of it. Get it? When Elisha comes of Malachi 4, he's by himself. Elijah will rise. Not Elijah and Moses. Elijah will arise. But the same inspiration that said Elijah will come for the last part of the church age to restore the faith of the children back to the original faith of the fathers, the apostolic faith, which you're supposed to go back, and the Antichrist has got them all pulled out to restore back as all the rest of the Scriptures is blended together. See? He comes by himself. See? But when he comes to the church, the Bible, uh, comes to the 144,000, the Bible plainly states 
that both he and his two of them, yes. not one of them, two of them. And his first ministry couldn't take the Jews and put them back to the law because he, because he comes preaching Christ to the 144,000. Amen. 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 That Messiah that was cut off. Amen. That's it. So don't have it confused. It's not confused. The scripture don't lie. <laughs> Out of it. Amen. Glory. Oh, and I see oh, that. I, I, I said, thank you, Lord. And I watched it take place out there. Seen that Elijah walk out there for that first age by himself. And he's by himself. Then when I see him come again way over somewhere else, there was two of them there. Amen. So there it is. That, that does it, Lord. Amen. I see it now. Hallelujah. If I had it would be a little confusion to somebody, but he, he told me to miss it, so I did. Notice, these men are kept alive by God from their original ministry for future service. They serve it so well. See? Just think, that spirit of Elijah ministers five times. Hallelujah. Moses 2. What? Keep alive for further, further service. They were, neither one of them dead now. Don't you believe that? They were both seen alive talking to Jesus on Mount Transfiguration. <laughs> but remember, they must die. Now, now Moses actually died, but he rose because he's a perfect type of Christ. Okay? Nobody ever know where he was buried. The angels come tuck him. Okay? He had angel Paul bear. <laughs> Why? No mortal man could pack him where he was going. <laughs> he just went through an act. <laughs> That's all. He had angels Paul bear. Well, they took him where he was supposed to be. No one knows. Even the Satan didn't even know it disputed with the archangel. That's right. He couldn't understand what happened to Moses. <laughs> I see him trembling over there, looking out over the land and looking back to the children and so forth. I see him trembling, but he stepped up on the rock and that was the last time I saw him. <laughs> That's a rock. That's a rock. Let me stand on that rock at the end of my road. Yes, sir. Uh, my colored brother used to come up here and sing a little song. If I could, I surely would stand on that rock where Moses stood. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, that's a rock I want to stand on to. By faith, I stand there. But remember, Elijah, he just got tired. Because yeah. he had a lot of work ahead of him. Yeah. <laughs> so he's pretty well wore out, and God just sent him a ride home. <laughs> right? Sent a chariot. Is that right? Took him up. He never died. Because he kept him alive. He had future work for him. Let him anoint a man too, see? Come forth in his spirit. But they must taste death. Now, Revelations 11. Let's put, I'm right here anyhow. Let's just hit it, Revelations 11. Watch and see if they're not both killed. Yes, sir. They both have taste death. Yes, sir. After their ministry is finished, they taste death. Revelations 11. And let's start at 7. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pits makes war against them. Oh, my, he can't stand them. Holy rollers are back again, see? All right. All right. Out of the bottomless pit makes war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. That's right. But watch what happens. They're perfectly tight now. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street, in the street of that great city spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, Jerusalem. Amen. See? Now, they have to taste death, don't they? That's right. After a minute is finished. Why? The seventh angel's ministry, the seventh angel's ministry, Elijah's ministry to the seventh angel, not, why don't, why could not, rather, I'm trying to say, the seventh angel's ministry then be by Moses, that he's immortal, as uh, same as it could be by Elijah. Why don't they, why didn't God just send said Elijah, you, you don't work so hard I, and everything all these different places, I, I believe we'll just send Moses down. Why? Look at Moses' ministry. Elijah was a prophet to all nations. 
But Moses was a lawgiver to the Jews only. Amen. Amen. Moses is there to say, well, the reason he come with Elijah, them Jews saying, wait, we still keep the law here. But well, here stands Moses himself. Amen. And here's Elijah standing Amen. with him. <laughs> See, he comes to the Jews. Only. See, Moses only got to the Jews. The prophet Elijah was to all nations, but Moses become a prophet to the Jews and a lawgiver. See, that was his message, the law. But what was Elijah's message? The bobbed haired women. Denomination. Yes, sir. He really tore them to pieces, painted up faces. Told them to go be fed to the dogs. He just really tore into them. And then when his spirit came up on John, he stomped dry right down the wilderness and done the same thing. Right. Amen. So don't you think that we belong to this or that? God's able to these stones are right, so did Abraham. Amen. Walked up the road, he said, And you mean to tell me that you married your own brother in law? It's not lawful for you to do it. Oh, brother. He told her. Sure. Notice. These souls are to wait a little season for the 144 to be martyred. Oh, isn't that, isn't that, this puts the Bible together. Now my time's exactly up. If I let out on early, but I got just a few more little things to say if you can stand up. I know it's hot and I'm sweating, but listen, I just got something to tell you. It's just so good. It's just burning right in my heart. I hope you haven't forgotten. See, let me say this in the presence of Him. By His grace, He also let me see my people not long ago in white robes. You remember? <laughs> you remember the story? Not long ago. The Gentile bride. They're there now. They're always in white robes. I woke up. I've been on a meeting. It's been about a year ago a little more. I woke up one morning and I raised up and I said, Sweetheart, to my wife, she didn't move. The kids about to get up and take them to school. Right up here, the old place. Well, I, I raised up in the bed. You know, lean, you know how I set up and just lean your head back against the headboard. We got one of the old-fashioned beds. And um, so I just leaned back like that and I thought, Boy, you're already 53. If you're going to do anything for God, you better get doing it. Because you're going to be too old as you want. I thought, you know, that's right. Oh, boy, you know, I ain't very far away. I got to go pretty soon. I said, that's, that's a year older than my daddy lived. I thought, I got to move away pretty soon. I thought, and here I ain't done nothing for God yet. I thought, I always wanted to do something for Him. I thought, I got to hurry and do it if I'm going to do it. And I don't know how I'm going to do it. That's all. Now, man, I hope I live to see Him coming. I don't want to be a spook, a spirit. I was always afraid of a spirit. And I, you know, that kind of... I always thought like if I'd meet Brother Neville and he'd be a little white cloud moving around. And I'd say, Hello, Brother Neville. And uh, he'd say, Hello, Brother Branham. But some other sense, he couldn't talk. But I just know that it was Brother Neville. I want to shake his hand like I always do because that's all I know is human beings. See? I want to shake his hand, but he ain't got no hand. Down there in the grave, rotted away. See? I don't mind. I hope I don't have to go through that. Now, I was, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. I, I was afraid to die. Not afraid I'd be lost, but I didn't want to be a spirit. I want to remain a man. I want to wait for the rapture. See? I just want to stay like that. I don't want to be no spirit. Lord, I was laying there thinking of that. And all at once, there was something happened. Now, you know, and all of you are acquainted, of the visions. And if this was a vision, I never had one like it. See? And I've had them since I was a little bitty boy. And uh, all at once, something happened. And I felt myself leaving. Oh, and I, I thought I, I've already died. See, and I'm, I'm going on. See, and I got to a place. And I thought I believe I look back. It's just as real friends as I'm standing right here. And I turned around to look back, and there I was laying on the bed. And I stretched out, laying by the side of my wife. I thought, well, it's probably a heart attack. See, and I thought, well, see, I just died instantly. Which should be a fine way of going. So I thought, that's a heart attack. I didn't have to suffer. I, looked, I thought, well, now that's strange. There I lay right there and here I stand here. So I turned. It looked like a great big, uh, uh, like a great big uh, uh, field like or something. Just a great spreading field of bluegrass. And I said, uh, 
Well, I wonder what this is. And all of a sudden, as I look, here come thousands, times thousands of young women, all in white robes, hair hanging down to their waist, yeah. barefoot. And they were running right towards me. I thought, now, what's this? I turned around and looked back there, and there I was, and looked up this way. There they come. I bit my finger. I heard, I, I, I'm not asleep, exactly, but I could feel, and I said, well, something here funny. And these women all come running. And I've never seen such pretty women. And they all look around to me. And when they run to me, you know how I've been kind of... They call me a woman hater, but I'm not, see. But uh, I, I just think a good woman is a, one that is a jewel. But I think one that is no good is, as Solomon says, water in your blood. So I uh, certainly ain't got no use for, for ill-famed women or smart aleks. And so these women all come and start throwing their arm around. Now that's unusual. No, I wouldn't stand for that. So, and they were, now I'm going to have to say this in a way that um, I'm a mixed crowd. But they were ever, They were women. They were women. And they, they hugged me. Each one saw her, our precious brother. And one would hug me, and then the other one would hug me. I stand there looking, and I thought, well, now, what's this? See? And they stand there, and I thought, what's happened? I looked back down there. I was laying right down there. And here I was standing here. And I thought, now, that's odd. I, I don't understand. And then women holler, oh, our precious brother, and hugging me. Now, they were as ever bit in feeling women. Now, forgive me, sisters, as I say this, because... Uh, but you listen to your doctor. And if we ain't got clean minds, then we're not Christians. And I don't care. I've always lived clean. God knows that. When I was a little boy, the angel of the Lord told me to not defile my body, smoke or drink. And that's been truth. By the grace of God, I've kept that. When I was a sinner, I didn't run around with women. And so, but any man that lets a woman hug up into his arms, him being made up of cells of male and her of females, there's a sensation. I don't care who you are, and I don't tell you not if you're a healthy person, but not there. Because you don't have any more different cells. You'll never see them there. There was a change. There's no more than just a brotherly love to them women. Although in the grace that they looked at, I think a, a woman, a nice woman that holds herself right and walks like a lady, she's, a, she's an example of a jewel on earth. I, I like anything that's graceful. And I think a, a woman that holds her place and tries to be a lady is a, is a statue of honor. Amen. I do believe that. And I think what it is, and it's just like the, the Christ and the Antichrist. The same thing. I, I like anything that's smashed. I got a pretty horse. And it just stands in its statue of a real pretty horse or anything like that. A pretty mountain. Pretty women. Pretty man. Anything that stands in the making of God. I always admired it. And these were perfect. But no matter how much they would hug me up into their arms, and they were women, you understand, but there could never be no sin. The male glands and the female glands both was gone. Thank the Lord. They were my sisters completely. I looked and I began to, I looked at my hands, I seen it's all so young. And I looked I was young too. And, I, and uh, losing my hair as a young man, uh, putting carbolic acid on a barber, didn't tuck it all out when I was just a boy. And it's been always a kind of a, a thing to me that I, I, I get a cold so quick because my scalp's still soft, you know, and the roots of the hair are still there, but it was burnt with carbolic acid and the hair can never grow. See? And um, I went my wife when I long years ago and got me a hair piece to wear, a little piece of hair, but don't cover my head up. But I was always ashamed to wear it because it looked like it was something false. And I didn't want nothing false. Amen. And so I thought, I'll just put me on a stocking cap. And then as I did for a while. You know what they did? They wanted to call me Bishop. They then said I wanted to be a bishop. I just said, let her go. So I just suffer out the bad cold and let it. But I used to just raising them windows or anything. That little air come right across like that. Boy, I got it. Now, I went to a doctor and asked him, what did he think? He said, well, see, your, your pores are open. You're sweating from preaching. That air comes. It, it puts a cold germ up here in the mucus. It runs down over your throat. The next morning, you're hoarse. That's it. And, um, and so, oh, my, you fellows that's got hair, you don't know how thankful you should be. 
And um, uh, that is right, see. I mean, I, I found out then, uh, I'm gonna, one of these days, if I don't get my teeth, I'm going to have to have some of them. And so, or either do without them. So if a fellow, if a fellow, well, I wouldn't think it'd be any more for a man if he wanted to, to wear a hairpiece and be for a woman to wear one of these mouses or rats or what they put in their hair like that to make it up, see. But, uh, but of course, uh, if you do it, it depends on what you're doing it for. It depends on what you're doing it for. And so, but however, it's standing there, I filled up, and I had my hair again. My, I was young, and these, all these young, I thought, well, isn't this strange? Here they are, and there's all around. And I looked coming, and I, I see Hope coming. She, you know, she died at 22. She's still just as pretty as ever, many of you remember. A big dark eyes, she's German, her black hair hanging down her back. I thought, now, when she gets here, she'll say, she'll say, Bill. I know she will. I know she'll say Bill when she gets here. I was watching every one of these women come and hug me and say, Oh, precious brother, we're so glad to see you. I thought everyone dressed this alike. But they had their hair different, you know, red hair and black hair and blonde hair. And, and uh, they was coming by, but they're all young. And when she got to me, I thought, I'm just going to see what she said. And she looked up at me and she said, Oh, our precious brother. And she hugged me. And she just went on. Some other woman come, hug me next. I heard a noise and I looked over this way and here come a bunch of men. Young fellows. All in age, about 20. They had dark hair and blonde hair and, and they all had white robes on and barefooted. And they run to me and begin to hug me hard, precious brother. And I turned back around and there I was still laying there. And I thought, well, now this is strange. And just then a voice went to talk to me. I never did see the voice. It said, you have been gathered you have been gathered to your people. And then some man picked me up, set me way up on a big high thing like this. I said, why did you do that? He said, in earth, he was the leader. And I said, well, I, I don't understand this. And that voice talking to me. I never could see the voice. Now, it's just above me talking to me. I said, well, if I, if I have passed on, I want to see Jesus. I said, I, he was so, he's all my life, I want to see him. And um, so he said, you can't see him now. He's still higher. See? It's below the altar yet. See? The sixth place where man goes. See? Not the seventh where God is. Seventh dimension to six. And they were and they were all there and they were passing by. And I said, uh, looked like there were actually millions of them I've never seen. Them. And while I sat there, these women and men still running by and hugging me, called me brother. And I sat there and then a boy said, You've been gathered to your people like Jacob was gathered to his people. I said, all these my people? Or all these Branhams? He said, no, they're your converts to Christ. And I looked around, and there's a real pretty woman run up. She looked, we just all about the same. She threw her arm around me, and she said, oh, my precious brother. She looked at me, and I thought, my. She looked like an angel. And she passed by, and that boy said, didn't you recognize her? And I said, no, I didn't recognize her. said, you led her to Christ when she was past 90. said, you know why she thinks so much of you? I said, that pretty girl was past 90? Yeah. said, she can never change no more now. So said, that's when she said, precious brother. I thought, oh my. And I was afraid of this. Well, these people are real. Amen. They, they wasn't going anywhere. They wasn't tired being there. And I said, well, uh, why can't I see Jesus? I said, well now, he will, uh, he will come someday. And He'll come to you first. And then you'll be judged. He said, these people are your converts that you've led. And I said, you mean by being a leader? And, I, uh, 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 and He'll judge me? He said, yes. And I said, does every leader have to be judged like that? He said, yes. And I said, what about Paul? He said, he'll have to be judged with his. Well, I said, if his group goes in, so will mine, because I preached exactly the same word. I said, were he baptized right. in Jesus' name? I did too. Amen. I preached, and millions screamed out at all. I said, we're resting on that. Hallelujah! And I thought, my, if I only knew this before I come here, I'd make people come here. They can't afford to miss this. Why, looky here. And then, and he said, now someday he'll come. And then, now in here, we neither eat, drink, or sleep. We're just all one. Well, it isn't perfect. It's beyond perfect. 
It's not sublime, it's beyond sublime. There's no name, can, you can't think, there ain't no words in the vocabulary to say it. You've just arrived, that's all. And I thought, well, this, this would be perfect, and then what are we going to do next? Said so then when Jesus comes, and, we're, and He judges you or, or for your ministry, then we go back to earth and take up bodies. Well, I, I never thought about that. That's exactly the scripture. So then we go back to earth and take up bodies. Then we eat. We don't eat here. Neither do we sleep. So we eat down there. But we go back to the earth. I thought, my, isn't this wonderful? Oh, my. And I was afraid of it. Well, why was I afraid of dying to come to this? Well, this is perfection plus perfection plus perfection. Oh, this is wonderful. See, we're right under the altar. Amen. That was it. They're right under the altar waiting for the coming. Or you can go get the ones that were sleeping in the, uh, the, the body, sleeping in the dust to raise us again. Come by, raise us up like Jesus come through paradise. He brought up Abraham, Isaac, and all of them. He was waiting in the first resurrection. They introduced the city and appeared to many. Perfectly scriptural. The vision was that, or whatever it was, it was perfectly scriptural. And then I said, well, isn't this wonderful? And then I thought, isn't that wonderful? I heard something nicker, like a horse. And I looked in my little saddle horse that I used to ride, little prince. I thought so much of him. Here he was standing there by me and put his head over on my shoulder to hug me. Like I used to give him sugar, you know. He put his, I put my arm around him. I said, Prince, I know you'd be here. I felt something lick my hand. There's my old coon dog. When, when Mr. Short down here poisoned him, I swore I'd kill Mr. Short for it. I was about 16 years old. He poisoned him a dog button. My daddy caught me with a rifle going down to shoot him right in the police station. And I said, I'll kill him. I said, well, I want to order the dog's grave. And I, him. I said, Fritz, you've been a, like a companion to me. You've clothed me and sent me to school. And when he got old, I was going to take care of you. Now they've killed you. I said, I promise you, Fritz, that he won't live. I said, I promise you he won't live. I'll catch him on the street sometime walking and then I'll run right over him. And I said, I'll get him for you. But you know what? I led the man to Christ baptized him in Jesus' name and buried him at his death. I got converted about two years after that. I've seen things different then. I loved him instead of hating him. So then, uh, but however, there was Fritz down there looking me on the hand. And I, I looked, I couldn't cry. Nobody could cry. It was all joy. You couldn't be sad because it was all happiness. You couldn't die because it was all life. You couldn't get old because it was all you. Yeah, that's what, it's just perfect. I thought, oh, isn't this wonderful? And the millions, oh my. I was right home, see? And, uh, and just then I heard a voice. And it cried out. It said, all that you ever loved the reward for my service. I don't need no reward. He said, all that you ever loved and all that ever loved you, God has given to you. I said, praise the Lord. I feel funny. I thought, what's the matter? I feel funny. I turn around and look, and on the bed, my body was moving. I said, oh, I don't have to go back. Surely, don't, don't let me go. But the gospel had to be preached. In just a second. I was on the bed again, see, like that. No more than about two months ago, that you heard it read, and the businessman's voice has run all over the world, see. And Brother Norman in here, I suppose he's in here somewhere tonight, he translated all there and sent it in pamphlets and went everywhere. Uh, ministers wrote in, many of them, and said, one here, I just tell this very one, it's been hundreds of them, of course. This one ran and said, Brother Brandon, your vision in the businessman's voice and I appreciate Tommy Nichols, although he isn't with the businessman no more. I don't know why, but he isn't. But he put it in there just right. <laughs> what did I said right there in that Trinitarian magazine, he said, where, I, where Paul baptized in Jesus' name to command the people to do the same, I've done the same. See, he put it just the way it was. And so then, uh, I, I thought, my, and this minister wrote in and said, Brother Bram, your vision, which it could have been a vision, Said, now, I don't want to say translation. If Paul, if I was caught up into this first heaven and seen that, what about Paul that was caught from up into the third heaven? What that? He said he couldn't even talk about it, see, if he was caught up. If it was a catch-up, I don't know. I can't say. I couldn't tell you. But this minister said, Brother Bram, your vision sound very scriptural and all right until you stopped about a horse being there. Yeah. Said a horse in heaven. Said, now, see that ecclesiastical 
man wisdom mind? See? He said, heaven was made for human beings, not horses. Well, I sat down, Billy, my son here, uh, put the letter right here in the old church office about three or four months ago. I said, my precious brother, I'm surprised at your wisdom, but, and your knowing of the scripture. I did not say that I was in heaven. Amen. I said it was in a place like paradise because Christ was still above. Yeah. See? But I said if it might satisfy you, uh, you turn over to Revelations 19 and when Jesus comes out of the heavens of heaven, yeah. he's riding on a white horse and all the saints with him are riding on yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And up in that same place, there was one that looked like an eagle and one looked like an ox. And, oh, my. Oh, my. Where's them horses that come got Elijah? <laughs> it just goes to show, you see, the human mind just wants something to pick on. That's right. Now, I notice, but I was just thinking, as this precious godly brother John, I just thought it'd be a good place to inject that just before closing. See, if John looked over there and them was of his brethren, see, his brethren that had to suffer a little. Then, see, the Lord God permitted me to see my brethren and the saints that were waiting for the coming of the Lord. Notice, they were not under the altar of sacrifice. Mine wasn't, but these was, they were martyrs. See, mine wasn't under the martyr's altar. Now, I want you to listen real close. Now, I'll close on it. It's just about 10 minutes to 10 o'clock. If I have to just cut it off and finish it tomorrow. Look. They, they were not my, the ones that the Lord showed me, the bride. She was not under the martyr's block. No, the sacrifice altar of the martyrs. But had received white robes by accepting the pardoning grace of the living word. Christ had given them a white robe. I do not think by the opening, or I do think rather by the opening of this fifth seal, as I believe that it's open to it. I did it with good conscience, with clear revelation before God, not trying to just make it think because I always was against the organization, never would belong to him, but it's open to me now. And I do think another thing by the opening of this fifth seal in this day straightens up a doctrine right here that I might speak of of soul sleeping. Now I realize that there's people in here that does believe that, see, in the soul sleeping. I think this disproves that. They're not sleeping. They are alive. Amen. Their bodies are sleeping. But the soul, not in the grave, they're in the presence of God. Amen. Under the altar. Here is where I differ with a precious brother, a teacher, and I know I know I see some of these people sitting here that I realize that this is a great teacher. He's a doctor in a, a doctor of divinity. P H L L D. And he's a he's a real good man too. I think he's going on at this time but he was a good man and a good writer and it's uh, brother Ewer Smith the author of Daniel of Revelations now to you people who are a follower of his teachings see, I, I don't I'm not just don't want to say this arrogantly but I just see but uh, brother Smith and trying to support see and trying to support soul sleeping there he mentions that the soul sleep and there is no altar of sacrifice in heaven that the only altar spoke of is uh, he, he believes is in heaven is the altar of incense but to you dear people and not different than my brother I'll probably hope to meet him on the other side see not different with that great teacher. But just to show you how this disproves that. See? It disproves it. The opening of this seal. 
in this last day. It just takes soul stealing from out of the way. Amen. They're alive. Amen. They're not dead. Amen. Notice. Notice this now. Now, if there's no altar of sacrifice in heaven, where is the sacrifice for sin land? The lamb. Amen. There has to be a place where that slain lamb, bloody, is laying there. Where the blood is... Now, the incense was the odors, odor of stuff that they burnt, which the Bible said was the prayers of the saints. If there isn't no sacrifice on the altar, then the prayers cannot be received. It's only by the blood on the sacrificial altar that lets the prayers go through to God. Brother Smith was wrong. Not disagreeing with my think I made myself clear with brotherly love and respects yeah. for his great work. See, but he was wrong. The fifth seal has opened that. See? Many other things, if you call it. See, I'm waiting for my questions. See, but, all right. Now, where was the ark? The slain, wounded, bleeding, bloody lamb for atonement for these odorous prayers. Notice. The Bible says, if this earthly tabernacle of our dwelling be dissolved, we have one already waiting. That's where I've seen those saints. See? Watch when a baby... Excuse me again, sisters, for this plain talk before young uh, women. But look, when a mother is, has conceived and that little bunch of muscles is twisting and jumping, you understand. It is a natural body. And just as nature is performing the natural body, did you ever notice your wife before the little ones is born? She always right along last becomes real kind, sweet. If she hasn't been all of her life, she will be then. Do you ever notice how saintly or kind of a feeling you notice a mother and you see some sinner out there and make fun of a mother that's the, a pregnant woman? I think that's ridiculous. That's life coming to the world. But did you notice, around that mother seems to be a sweet feeling. What is it? It's a little spiritual body, spiritual life, waiting to come into that little body as soon as it's born. Now it's only begotten. But when it's born, it's born. The spiritual body unites with the natural body. And then the Bible teaches that we are now begotten of God. We are begotten of the Holy Spirit that in us is Christ, a Son of God, being formed in us. And when this earthly body be dissolved, this spiritual body comes from the bowels of the earth. There is a third body waiting to receive it. If this earthly tabernacle is dropped, there is another body to receive it. This mortal body puts on immortality. This terrestrial puts on celestial. This, see what I mean? There is a natural body that's sinful. But in its making just like it is another body that we go to. And I am so grateful to God that I can say as your pastor and brother, I've seen those people, so help me in that body and handle them with my hands. That's right. Notice. Watch. Look at Moses. Elisha. After Moses had died and Elisha had been taken into heaven, he stood here on Mount Transfiguration with his senses of speech, hearing, understanding, and talked to Jesus before the crucifixion. Now, what kind of a body did he have? Look at Samuel. After being dead for about two years, was called back in the, the cave that night by the witch of Endor and talked to Saul with language heard Saul spoke back and four new things that was going to happen still his spirit hadn't changed he was a prophet when Elijah's spirit comes upon the mantle of driving just like Elijah 
He'll go to the wilderness. He'll love the wilderness. He'll be a hater of immoral women. He'll be against organization. He'll pull no punches for nobody. And uh, that's just, that's, that'll be his spirit. It was each time to come. See? Moses will be the same person. Now, and we find out in Revelation uh, 22, 8, the same thing. Now, or to settle it for those who, those souls, now watch this, under the altar of the breaking of this seal that had been slain in the time between the death of Christ and the going up of the church, the Eichmann group and all that, and true Jews with their names on the book, if you'll watch, my brother, according to the Scripture, they could talk, cry out, speak, hear, and have all five senses. Not sleeping in the grave, unconscious, they were very much awake and could talk, speak, hear, anything else. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Oh, help us. Two minutes. Amen. I'm uh, sorry I kept you half hour. No, I can't. I want to say that. See, that's right. See, but look, here is to the best of my understanding, the best in according to the revelation that was given me this morning, just before daylight, by the Lord Jesus Christ. There is the open fifth seal Amen. to go with the other four. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. By His grace, He gave it to me. His grace to you and I. We thank Him for it. Amen. And with His help, I intend to live closer to, as I can live, teaching others to do the same thing until I meet Him with you in glory. Amen. When all things are over. Amen. I love Him for this. And it's the best of my knowledge to it. And I truly believe with all my heart that the true revelations of the revealings of the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth seal is now open to us. before God as we've seen this seal open to us God having to take his own beloved children and blind their eyes and send them because his own justice, justice requires judgment of sin think of it his justice and his holiness requires justice. A law without a penalty is not law. And his own laws himself he cannot defy and still remain God. That's the reason God had to become man. He couldn't take a substitute, a son that wasn't just an ordinary son to him or something. God became both, Jesus became both son and God. The only way he could justly do it. God had to take the penalty himself. It wouldn't be just to put it upon somebody else, another person. So the person of Jesus was God, manifested in the flesh, called Emmanuel. And to do that, and to take a bride, and to save a lost bunch of heathen Gentiles, he had to blind his own children. And then punish them for it in the flesh, for rejection, but His grace provided robes. 
but to life, see what happened. And if he had to do that in order for us to have a chance, how can we spurn that chance in love? If there is in this building tonight that person, young or old, that has to this time spurned that opportunity that cost God such a price and you would like to accept that offer to God tonight that you don't have to, as far as we ever know to be a martyr though you may be but a white robe has been provided for you and if God knocks at your heart now why not accept it now let us bow our heads again if that person or persons are in here that desires that I want to accept it upon the basis of your faith in the shed blood that God had to shed for you they suffered beyond anything that any other mortal they couldn't have been a mortal being suffer like that till his own grief separated his water from his blood in his veins before he went to Calvary Drops of blood was coming from his body. With such grief and broken heart that what he had to do, but could have refused it too, but willingly did it. For you and I, can you reject such matchless love? And you see that now by the opening of these seals, that what you have did, and what God has did for you, and you're ready to surrender your life to God and if he'll snatch you out of the hands of the Antichrist that you're now in, would you accept his offer by just raising your hand to him, saying, God, by this I signify, I accept that offer of grace. And Brother Branham, I desire your prayers that I'll ever remain faithful. Raise your hand and I'll pray. God bless you. God bless you. Mean it now. Don't, don't do it unless you mean it. And right where you're sitting, accept it right there. Because remember, you could not have raised your hand unless something told you to do it. And nothing else could have done it but God. So now when you see the scripture so perfectly unfolded, you see what's been going on down through the ages, the last few years, 20 or 30 years, you see it perfectly vindicated. You see the scripture telling exactly what's happened and what's fixing to happen, then upon the basis of the faith in the work of Christ where you're sitting right now and have raised your hands, say, from this minute on it's settled. I take Christ now for my Savior and I'll live for Him the rest of my life and I desire God to fill me with the Holy Spirit. And if you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the pool will be waiting for you. Let us pray. Lord God, there were some great number of hands among the people that went up. I'm sure that you're the very same Lord Jesus that made the atonement for us many years ago and uh, by seeing those seals revealed and the great things that's taken place right here in the last few years, I believe with all my heart that the door of mercy is beginning to close and you're ready to take your journey now to redeem your people. While there is room and a door open as it was in the days of Noah, may these precious souls that lives in the body of this tabernacle that's going to be dissolved someday that raised up that mortal hand on the inside of them because of their their conviction and their profession that they believe and want to accept your proposition to them for salvation on this open sealed book that's been opened to us give to them tonight Lord a robe of the righteousness of Jesus Christ and clothe their soul in that, that they might stand before you in that day which is close at hand, perfect 
by the blood of Christ. Lord God, if they have not been baptized into the name of Jesus Christ, and upon the revelation that you give me concerning it, and seeing that Paul commanded people that had even been baptized by John the Baptist to be rebaptized again in the name of Jesus Christ in order to receive the Holy Spirit in Acts 19, I ask that you'll convince them, Lord, of the truth. And may they obey you. And then in obedience of their acceptance and obedience to their confession and to the water, may you in return fill them with the Holy Ghost for a power of service the rest of their life. I commit them now to you in the name of the sacrificed Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I up, obey the commanding of the Spirit that would follow the, the constitution of the Word for a repented sinner. Hallelujah. Follow it in every act, and the God of heaven reward you for your stand for Him. Amen. Lord bless you. Tomorrow night, bring your pencils and papers now as you have been. We expect to be here. At the same time, at 7.30, sharp the Lord willing, and uh, pray for me that God will open the sixth seal to me tomorrow, Amen. and I'll be able to bring it to you as He gives it to me. Blessed Until Jesus. then, we sing again, not only to hymns, but to praises for Him that died in our stead and redeemed yes. us. I love Him. I love Him.